Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hi, everyone. Tom here, and welcome to the maiden voyage of the Screw the Commute podcast. I'm thrilled you're here. In this first episode, I'll give you a little background about myself and what you can expect if you subscribe to the podcast. Plus, today's lesson will be the number one biggest mistake I've seen in over 21 years of teaching internet marketing to small business people. If you're making that mistake, I'm also going to tell you what to do about it. Now, if you like what you hear, please subscribe. For you podcast newbies out there, we have instructions on how to do that at the website, screwthecommute.com. Also, leave us a review, and we'll have instructions on how to do that, too. Now, if you're leaving a good review, you'll click on the good link. Now, if you're leaving a bad review, you'll click on a bad link. (laughs) That will either not work at all or take you to somebody else's podcast. (laughs) Okay, so why should you listen to me? Well, I've never had a job outside of high school and the beginning of college. I started my own business formally in 1977 while I was still in college, but I've really been entrepreneurial and selling things since I was about 10 years old. Now, by the time I graduated college, starting with nothing, I owned five apartment buildings and a hotel. My daily life was going to the post office and picking up rent checks. I I dropped them off at the bank, and that was it. (laughs) The rest of the day was my own to work out, play sports, go to the movies, travel, or or pretty much anything I wanted to do. I really loved the idea of flying, so I hung around the airport and got my commercial pilot's license, and I freelanced as a charter pilot for several years. Now, that was cool, but I was really, you know, kind of just a high-class chauffeur. Then I got the bright idea to start a bar nightclub. (laughs) Oh, boy. Gunfights, knife fights. I broke numerous noses and arms throwing people out of the place. Bikers were trying to kill me. They blew up my car with shotgun blasts. I mean, I was lucky to get out of there alive. Then I moved to Washington, D.C. and started a crazy entertainment company. I decided when I got out of that bar business, whatever I did was going to be fun for me, and nobody was going to want to hit me with beer bottles. (laughs) All right, so I started a crazy entertainment company called prank masters we custom design practical jokes this was long before punk and all those kinds of uh places were (laughs) were on tv and uh, that kind of got me into the speaking business around the early 90s around 1994 the commercial internet came along and i'm thinking to myself you mean i can sell stuff around the world sitting on my butt in my basement from my computer i said i'm gonna figure this out so I got, uh, I mean, I didn't make a nickel for two years trying to figure it out. And then I got good training from what I call the 31-year-old grandfather of internet marketing, a guy named Corey Rudel. Now, he's unfortunately passed away in a tragic car accident. In those days, I paid him $1,230 for a half an hour, half an hour. I took his training, and then I immediately started making money. Four years later, I was an internet multimillionaire, which I enjoy and build on to this day. And I sell all kinds of stuff. I mean, family and business protection dogs, tennis stuff. I have a crazy site called fatsotennis.com. Public speaking stuff. I made loads of money selling public speaking stuff, and that's not an easy sell because most people hate public speaking. Made lots of money doing that. Raised money for charity. What I like best about it is that I only deal with people I like. I mean, if I don't like you, you can just take a hike. I mean, if I really don't like you, I may come after you in my consumer advocate role. I'll talk to you about that in a minute, but called Scam Brigade. Another really great thing that you'll want to tune in to this podcast for is because I teach, and I have been doing this for over 20 years, teaching people how to make their hobbies tax deductible legitimately like the tennis stuff and the dog stuff, you know, the, anything you can think of, most people are just 
paying through the nose to do their hobby and don't get any credit for it. So teach you how to, to do that. Now, I'm very much against all the internet scams, and I have a TV show in development uh, with a, a big Hollywood production company, and it's called Scam Brigade. You can check out the trailer at the website, scambrigade.com. We'll have it in the show notes below. Now, I don't have any delusions of grandeur. I mean, they told me point blank, don't quit your day job. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm hoping that it uh, comes to fruition because there's so many people getting ripped off on these internet things and older people are losing their homes and younger people are losing their inheritance from the older people that are losing their homes. So it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar problem and I'm hoping to help address it. So anyway, that's my consumer advocate stuff. Let's see. Now, I also have the honor of an entirely separate Hollywood production company approached me about doing a documentary about my life. And I'm thinking, hey, I thought you were supposed to be dead before, <laughs> before that happens. But uh, it's called The American Entrepreneur. And it's how my dad came to this country on a cattle boat in the early 1900s. He became an entrepreneur and made me into one. And I've helped thousands of people to tell their boss to take this job and shove it. All right, enough about me. Let's let's talk about me some more. <laughs> no, you'll find out I'm a little goofy, and uh, uh, you can make a lot of money and have a lot of fun. <clears throat> That's part of the, the name of this thing, Screw the Commute. I don't want to sit in a car making other people rich. I want to uh, help you get rich and uh, enjoy all the things that go along with it. All right, so uh, before we get into... Uh, uh, our today's topic, which is a great one, and it's something no small business owner should ignore. Uh, just a little bit about the schedule. Right now, since this is the first the maiden voyage, I'm planning on doing a Monday training session like this, although you won't have to listen to all my bio the, uh, on all of them, on Mondays. And then on Wednesdays and Fridays, I'll be in interviewing other successful entrepreneurs. So uh, that's the, the schedule now, and you can always check if there's any updates on that at uh, screwthecommute.com, the home website of this podcast. All right, let's take a short message from our sponsor, and then we'll get into today's topic, keyword research and how important it is to your business. Today, almost 2 billion of you will go online, retrieving over 100 billion searches for information, goods, and services, and 6 million of you will view a page on the internet before this commercial is over. The world has changed, and so is the way we do business. At the Internet Marketing Training Center, you can study online at your pace to fit your schedule, and you can graduate with the skills and knowledge to compete in the global marketplace or start your own home-based business. Call us today or go online at imtcva.org because it's about time. Yours. Okay, let's get into today's topic. Remember, this is the biggest mistake I've identified in over 1,700 students over 20-some years. Number one is they don't do keyword research. They get a, what they believe is a great idea. I call them CSIs. You know, a lot of people say, well, CSI, that's a TV show, isn't it? Crime Scene Investigation. No, I say that's crappy, stupid idea. <laughs> All right. And, and guess what? All ideas are crappy and stupid, including my own, until you can prove they aren't with real numbers, that somebody actually wants the, what you've got. Now, when I say the word keyword, I really mean keyword and keyword phrases. See, this is the way you're found on the internet to bring in new customers and, uh, and email list subscribers and all the people that are going to hear about you and publicity, all that stuff. Now, my name is not a keyword. I mean, if I was Tony Robbins, maybe it would be a keyword, but I'm not. What you have to keep in mind is there's always more people that never heard of you than have heard of you. If they've heard of you, they can easily find you. We want the people who never heard of us to find us based on what we can do for them. That's the key here. Now, there's a big return on investment to this tedious, boring work because you use the keywords in so many ways. Once you do this keyword research, unless something crazy changes in your industry, 
you do it once and you've got this e enormous list of keywords and you use them on your website, in blog postings, in articles, in videos, podcasts, transcripts, webinars, teleclasses, and whatever they haven't invented yet. All right, you'll use them because the internet still works on words until they start embedding chips in your head, which <laughs> may not be long, but, but for now, keywords are, are how it works. Now, when I ask most business people how many keywords apply to them, I get answers from, I don't know, maybe 10 to at the most 30. That's what most small business owners believe that people are typing in to find them. Well, let me give you an example. We did a wedding reception book because I did, I have a eulogy book and wedding speech book and wedding uh, toast book and things like that. These are ebooks. So we did what I call deep keyword research on this wedding reception book we did. What do you think we found for how many keywords and keyword phrases had to do with wedding reception? Yeah, go ahead, guess. Hold your hands up up there. All right. Yeah. 6,300 keywords and keyword phrases. All right. So, so guess what? If you had a wedding reception book and you had 10 keywords that people were finding you on, and I had 6,300, who do you think is going to win selling their wedding reception book? This applies across the board to whatever field you're in. Doesn't matter if it's business to business or what. There's still way more keywords and keyword phrases that people are typing than you can imagine. So how do you find them? There's lots of ways to do it. Well, I'll give you several of them here. One is there's tools on the internet. One that we use is called the Google Keyword Planner. Some tools you can get to in about 10 seconds. I'm gonna give you, I'll tell you that right now. As you're typing into Google to search for something, while you're typing, before you even get done typing, results are starting to come up and a, a little box drops down with other related phrases. And they're trying to anticipate what you are typing. Stop right there. Take a piece of paper on the side or another window somewhere because if you move, the, the window disappears on you. And write down those keywords and keyword phrases. At the same time, go down to the bottom of the page, or you can actually finish the search, and then go to the bottom of the page, and there's a whole bunch of related searches. They're doing your research for you. Let me tell you something. Those words wouldn't be there if they weren't used heavily in Google, right? Think about it. Why would Google suggest other ones that nobody ever uses, right? So write them down. Another way is you can look at your competitor's websites and promo materials. That's a good way to see what they're using. They might have tripped on some that you didn't know about. Now, uh, you can get a geek. Now, I uh, lovingly call uh, the tech people geeks and propeller heads and uh, techno geeks, <laughs> techno nerds. But uh, I highly suggest you, you keep these young people around. I mean, they help make me rich. Uh, I started in 1997, recruited a, a 10th grader who's now a millionaire in Los Angeles. You'll hear about him in, in other episodes, or we'll probably have him on here. Get them to show you how to look at keywords associated with your competitors' videos and websites. You can see it behind the scenes if you know how to do it, right? I can't really show you here on this uh, audio podcast, but... You really need these young people because they cut through and stuff that would take you uh, hours minimum or days or weeks to learn. A lot of times they do it in like 10 seconds. All right. So it's really worthwhile to do that. We'll probably do a whole uh, episode on recruiting uh, geeks. But get them to show you that the, the words that are associated with your competitors, websites and videos. Now, another thing you can do is ask your customers what they would type when looking for your service. I mean, you can also survey your email list, even if they're not customers. Now, one tip I learned from a guy that wrote the book, Ask, his name is Ryan Levesque, is don't give incentives like we always have done to get people to fill out surveys. Because we want the people that are most gung-ho about the topic, 
that don't need an incentive. A lot of people that you give them an incentive, they're just doing it to get the freebie and they could, uh, they just zoom through the answers. I've done it myself lots of times. All right. So, so don't give an, an incentive and you might check out that book called ask by Ryan Levesque. Now the first half of the whole book, he's kind of bragging about his credentials, but the second half is gold telling you how to do this. You don't have to buy his fancy software or anything, but uh, the ideas on surveying people that know you are just excellent. Uh, let's see. Now, let's go to this keyword planner by Google. It's free, a free tool, but they make it quite a pain in the neck to get to use it. But it's really worth it once you get, get signed up. What they do is you have to pretend like you're going to advertise to get access to the tool. So you have to sign up for a Google AdWords account. AdWords is the, the advertising arm of Google. So you sign up for an account, and they're going to lead you through like an ad. that They're going to help you create your first ad. You just put anything in there you want because you can pause the ad, and it's never going to run, but it's going to get you access to the tool. Now, you may want to run ads, and I'm sure we'll do issues on that uh, in the uh, future, but... Uh, just to get access to the tool, you have to pretend like you're going to uh, advertise, you're going to put your credit card in, and all this stuff. And if you have a Google account already, uh, it's just another one of the features, but you have to sign up separately for it. All right, so you finally get to the tool, and if you put a seed word, one of your keywords at the top, it kicks out, I think, up to 800 other ways people are typing that in and how many times per month they're typing that in. And you can hit a button and download the whole list to your computer. Now, I suggest you do this for a week, okay, and really get an idea like, oh, my God. And, and this always happens to my students. Their, jo their jaw drops like, oh, my God, I never thought of that. And if they never thought of that, that means all the other people in the world that did think of it, that are looking for X, Y, and Z with a certain keyword phrase, are not finding you. They're finding your competitor who was smart enough to do this work. All right, So, so this is really serious stuff that will help your business like crazy. Here's the deal. When you're not actually advertising... They just give you ranges on how many times per month. Like it might say zero to a thousand. Well, that might still be valuable to you, even just for the fact that you're seeing different ways people are typing it in. That in itself is valuable. But we really would like to know more accurately which keyword phrases are better than the others because you only have so much time in a day. When I told you I had 6,300 keywords on that wedding reception book, do you think I used them all? No, I didn't. But I was able to sort them so that I could use the most popular ones. And, you know, if something's getting two searches a month, I can't spend the time to use that keyword all over the place because it's, the payback is not big enough. Anyway, if you advertise... Even a small ad where you're maybe paying five cents or three cents a click on some uh, YouTube ad, which, again, in a later episode, we'll talk about YouTube ads and things like that. Then you get the accurate numbers. So instead of zero to 1,000, it's going to say 212 times per last month, per month. Uh, or And then the other one might say 840. See? So you you would want to spend your time on the one that's got 840 rather than 212 if you're limited on time. See? Now, some people, I will give you an opposite thing. See, the more popular a keyword is, the more competitive it will be normally because other people are doing this, this research also and putting their time into the most valuable keywords. So one method you can use is, is go opposite and go to the bottom of the list and work backwards. Now you say, well, I thought you just told me that there, you know, there's only two searches a month. It's not worth it. Well, you know, I, I probably wouldn't go to two searches a month, but I would go down the list where it's less competitive and work backwards towards the top of the list. And what does this get you? Well, it's less competitive. So even though there's less searches, you may get a higher ranking faster. 
that way than waiting and fighting it out on the really popular keywords where you may never get a, a really great ranking. So that's just an alternate way to use these. You're still going to use these keywords like crazy, so don't get discouraged about competition out there. In fact, there's a, a column in there about competition. Ignore it. If you stick with me long enough, you're going to blow by your competition in lots of ways, so don't worry about that. All right, so once you get this enormous list of keywords and, and sort it to the ones you're going to actually work on, what, what do you do with them? Well, the most important part of your website when you get a chance, write this down somewhere, underline it in blood or lipstick or whatever you want, is called the title tag. See, when somebody sits down at Google and decides to search for something, it sends out these things called spiders. Well, the spiders go looking for web pages about this topic, about this keyword or keyword phrase. And they start at the top of the page and work down. Well, the top of the page, technically, if you open a browser window, is the little tab up at the top. There's words in there. And if yours just says home page or Joe's Enterprises, that's the most important place there is. And you just screwed up because nobody's sitting down and typing, oh, I think I'd like to find a home page today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, no. They're looking for what their keyword and their problem is. And you've got to learn to use those title tags properly. And if your web person didn't show you how to do it properly, well, they probably don't know. They're probably a graphic artist and has no clue about the stuff I'm talking about right now. So anyway, that's one thing is put them in the title tag. Now, if you're using WordPress, which I highly suggest you should be, it's been the gold standard for years now, you can get a plugin called the All-in-One SEO Pack or another one called Yoast. We'll have them, I can't remember ever how to spell Yoast. It's Y-O-A or I don't know. But it'll be in the show notes. So it just uh, gives you a place to put stuff in and, and frequently you'll see the word tag. Well, just think of that as keyword, okay? So if it says, what are your tags? Do you, you type in your keywords. A lot of times you put a comma between them, or keyword phrases. On blog postings, the title of your blog posting is the most important place to put a keyword. Cute is okay in your blog postings to get people to click, clickbait, but from the search engine perspective, keywords are best. So if it's cute and has keywords, that's the best of both worlds because it catches people because it's it's cute or catchy, but it still catches, uh, you know, the, the search engine isn't interested in cute and catchy. It's interested in topics. If you have keywords and cute, that's best. Now, when you write an article, try to get them in the title of the article. You, know, you got to make sure they're in the body too, but don't overdo it. That's called keyword stuffing. And the search engines, that's been out for over with for 15 years. Also, it's better to do another video or write another article or another blog post than try to stuff a bunch of keywords into one. Now, the only exception to this is an Amazon book description. Yeah, you can load that up like crazy because they don't care. They just want you your book to get purchased. In most cases, you don't want to stuff a bunch of keywords into one place because each one dilutes the value of the rest. So, for instance, if you had four keywords, which was 100% of your keyword, each keyword is worth 25%. But if you had 10 keywords, which is 100% of your keywords, each keyword is only worth 10%. So when Google is trying to find a web page or blog posting to raise up high in the rankings, they want it to be a high percentage all about that very specific thing because Google wants the searcher. See, Google hates you, the website owner. Google just uses you. They love the searcher. They want the searcher to be happy and come back over and over and over. So they try to give them things that are exactly what they wanted. And they'll come back. They did that, I don't know, 18 years ago now. And that's why they're top of the heap in the search field. So you got to play their game. And you don't want to look like a jack of all trades by lumping tons and tons of keywords into one place. Because then you look like a jack of all trades. You've diluted the keywords. And boom, you never see the light of day. All you hear is crickets chirping. When I 
uh, teach search engine optimization, I used to get really specific on things like keyword density and keyword proximity. But that was the old days. I mean, Google uh, is getting smarter all the time. And if your search engine optimization, or in other words, your use of these keywords is too perfect, all right, and there's, there really is no degrees of perfection, but to Google, if you're showing patterns that you're trying to game the system, you won't see the light of day. So the more random things look, the better. So it's actually easier to teach you how to do this now. All right. So the first thing is research the keywords. Second is to implement them. And if, if you watch carefully, you'll see more and more people will start to find you online. Now, keywords are just one slice of the giant internet pie. That's one of the reasons I started the only licensed independent internet marketing school in the country called the Internet Marketing Training Center of Virginia. That's uh, distance learning. So if you can hear my voice and understand English, you can attend and do your classes anytime, day or night. I mean, you can even be working and still attend. Some people can start making money before they finish the school because of these nuts and bolts things that are taught there. We're certified to operate by the State Council on Higher Education in Virginia. You can visit imtcva.org for details on how we finance your education or your child's higher education so you're not buried in a trillion dollars in debt and all you know how to do is party, all right? And we give you an in-demand skill that will put you in line for high-paying internet marketing jobs or allow you to start your own screw-the-commute business or both. Now, we'll have uh, the link in the show notes also for that for you. So thanks for listening. Please subscribe and leave a review. The instructions are at screwthecommute.com. In the next episode, I'll be interviewing someone who has been screwing the commute for years. Tom Antion saying, I'll catch you next time.